This video is about how to make concrete last 100 years. My name is Tyler Lay and I love concrete and I love making these videos to help teach the world about concrete. So how do you make concrete last 100 years? Is that realistic? Well, there's many people today that design concrete to last that long and even longer. And I'm gonna show you some of the best practices they use to get there. This can be used while you make something simple like DIY projects, like garden gnomes, even up to something that's as complicated as a great dam and bridge. Now the plan of attack, number one, is to make great concrete. Number two, you're gonna maintain your concrete. And number three, have really smart designs. We're gonna focus on this video on number one, making the best concrete possible. A typical concrete mixture has about 75% aggregate and about 25% of the volume is paste. Paste, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to assume you've got great aggregate. There's lots and lots of good concrete aggregate out there. Use some of it. But the cement paste is where you take the water and cement together and that's this gray stuff that helps glue the rock and the sand together. Now the keys to making great paste are to have a very, very small initial cement grain spacing, have a small final cement grain spacing, and to then promote hydration. What? What's he talking about? Well, you're going to need to have a low water to cement ratio. Then you're going to need to consolidate and finish the concrete to get any air bubbles out, and then you need to cure it. I'll explain all three of these today. Now, the initial cement spacing is all about something called the water to cement ratio. This is the weight of the water divided by the weight of cement. For typical concrete exposed to extreme weather, that's anywhere between a 0.45 and a 0.35. For my DIYers out there, you can typically easily achieve a 0.40 to a 0.45 water to cement ratio. So this is what it's all about. So notice I've got two pictures here. Both of them have different water to cement ratios. The gray particles here are the cement grains and this empty space here is the water. Notice on the one on the left, it's got a lower water cement ratio and my grains are much closer together. This is gonna be big time once things start to hydrate. See all this lighter gray material? This is the glue, this is what grows, this is what holds it together. Now if I was gonna to load both of these and try to pass a load through them, it would be much easier for that load to go on through the system on the left than the system on the right. That's why it's stronger with the lower water cement ratio. But now if I was going to try to get water to go through each one of these systems, it's much, much harder to make the water go through the system on the left than it is to go through the system on the right. And keeping these outside chemicals out of your concrete, that is the key to making it long lasting. So the lower water cement ratio did a better job at transferring load and also keeping water out. And remember though, water cement ratio is only the first step. Now the next step is to have the final cement grains very, very close together. Because if you leave large voids inside your concrete when you're placing it, these will act like big internal cracks. They're awful, they're not good, and they will make your concrete weak, but also allow outside chemicals or water to get into your concrete, and that is your enemy. So how do you make constructible concrete though with a low water content? I mean, if you have low amounts of water, it's not as flowable, right? Well, you need to use a water reducing admixture. This is a dispersant that makes the concrete flowable and I'm gonna link to some commercially available water reducers in the notes today. So please make sure you check them out. Now this is what happens when you don't consolidate the concrete well, that's on the left. And this is when you do get a good job of consolidating the concrete on the right. See those voids? You don't want them inside your concrete, at least not the big ones. We will remove these voids by using vibrators, sometimes form vibrators that shake the outside of the concrete, or you can just rod it and then beat on the forms as much as you can with the wood mallet. Anything you can do to get those big bubbles out of the concrete, and you need to keep doing this until you don't see any more big bubbles coming out of your concrete. And you might wanna keep doing it a little bit more just for an extra safety factor. The final step is to promote reaction. When concrete hydrates, it needs water. You need to seal it up and keep it moist and warm. For example, here's a house slab that somebody poured and see all the blankets they put on top of it and they put 
coverings on top of that. They took pieces of wood on top of that to help seal all of that water in they possibly can. People do this all the time with concrete they care about. Now, if you do a good job promoting hydration, you will get more of this good stuff growing, more of this hydration product and structure forming. That's good. But if you do a bad job, if you don't cure it as well, it just doesn't work out quite as well. They don't connect quite as well. And it's much easier to get water in and outside chemicals and it's not as strong. And that's why curing is so important. Now I've got a video all about curing. You should check it out. Now, is there anything else you need to do? Well, if you are in a freezing environment, there's one more thing you have to do for your concrete. You actually have to add an air and training admixture. Yeah, it's like a soap a special kind of soap that you add during mixing. It makes these small microscopic bubbles all over the place. Another trick is you can't finish that concrete too much when you're in a freezing environment. I have some admixtures that can help you with this that again, I'm gonna link to in the notes below. I have two more videos where I talk about these in great detail. You can check one of them out here we talk about air bubbles inside concrete and another one here where we talk about scaling or when concrete loses its surface. So an advanced technique, boy, this is a power up technique. You can actually take out some of your cement and instead use fly ash, slag or silica fume. They're going to cause additional reactions and they're going to make your concrete even better. They can double your service life by a factor of two. This is a big time change and is powerful. The replacement levels you probably want to use for fly ash is about 20%. For slag, you can use up to 40%. And for silica fume, you're usually capped at about 5%. All of these are by mass. So in conclusion, making great concrete is a critical step to making it have a long life. This can be done by controlling the water cement ratio, by properly consolidating it, by curing it. But remember the plan of attack. This is only the first step. There are two more, so pay attention for more videos on these topics. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I wanna know, do you have any strategies to produce long life concrete? Do you have things that you would like to tell other people about or that we should try? Let me know by leaving me a comment below. And if you are an Instagrammer, you can follow me at concrete.tyler. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.